Hi and welcome to the module on behavior change in inclusive urban sanitation. My name is Vasco Schelbert. And my name is Pauline Cherunya. In this module, we will explore why and how to leverage behavior change for inclusive urban sanitation. We also introduce some frameworks used to analyze behavior and develop interventions and outline the four steps to systematic behavior change. First of all, we'd like to address the questions, what is behavior change? And why is it important for you as a consultant? Sustainability of inclusive sanitation programming does not simply rely on the provision of technology and services. No project can unfold its full potential if people don't comply. Individual behavior plays a key role in improving access to and in changing practices around water, sanitation, and hygiene. In this sense, behavior change refers to any transformation or modification of human behavior as a supporting strategy to achieve program outcomes and impacts. For example, within an inclusive sanitation program, you might want to motivate households to empty their septic tank on a regular basis using an official service provider or get utility customers to pay their bills on time. Therefore, understanding the living conditions and reality of your target group is key to success and is ideally already part of the project's planning phase. However, this is easier said than done. Understanding human behavior is complex and is affected by a variety of factors, as you can see in this image. Fortunately, there exist tried and tested frameworks and tools that build on previous experiences and lessons learned and support you in addressing this issue. In the following, we will show you the essential steps to consider and what tools are at your disposal and where you can find them. For years, it was assumed that raising awareness and telling people how they should behave would bring about behavior change. While providing information is an essential part, it is only one among a multitude of behavior steering factors. For instance, even though many people know that they can reduce the risk of getting sick by washing their hands, not all of them do so. Information campaigns often fail to address the people's living reality. Desired behaviors may be too difficult or cost too much time, effort or money, or some people might actively oppose the desired behavioral changes. To address the shortcomings of previous initiatives, new systematic behavior change methods were developed. These emphasize that behavior change is only effective if supported by an enabling environment. Generally, they are organized along four steps. Step one defines specific behaviors and who is to change. Step two is about understanding drivers and barriers to the target behavior. Step three is about the design and implementation of interventions which address these drivers and barriers. And finally, step four, to check if the intervention is working. In the following, we will follow this logic and present some principles and tools for each step. For step one, let's assume that you already know the so-called target behavior, which is, in this case, you want to get utility customers to pay their bills on time. To this end, you need to identify which type of customers exactly you are targeting. This is identifying the target population. It may be a particular subgroup of individuals for example, all neighborhoods with septic tanks bordering the ocean. To carry out the next steps, two to four, several tried and tested frameworks or tools exist. We will first introduce two of them, namely the runners and the Saniform approach. Ideally, you apply them in the planning phase of your project. Saniform uses a classification system commonly used in fields such as consumer behavior and social marketing. It defines three stages and asks, does the target population have the opportunity, the ability, and the motivation to practice the target behavior? For each category, the framework specifies subcategories. For example, for ability, the subcategory roles and decisions ask, what type of latrine should you build? Or who will be able to access and use it? For the category motivation, there is the subcategory competing priorities. For instance, 
sanitation needs may even compete with cell phone communication needs. The runner's approach also is an established systematic method for analyzing, designing, and evaluating behavior change strategies. It allows you to analyze behavior steering, psychosocial factors of individuals, as well as contextual factors. Psychosocial factors are elements in the mindset of a person, whereas context factors are influencing elements outside the person. The analysis then allows you to determine adequate behavior change techniques. You can find links to more information on runners, Saniform, and other frameworks online and at the end of this module. Ranas and Sanifoam help you identify drivers and barriers to a target behavior. Suppose you want to motivate households to empty their septic tank on a regular basis using an official service provider. Some typical questions you should ask are How easy or difficult is it for the household to access the service? How affordable is the service to the households? You will find more template questions in the respective guidelines. To produce findings, it is essential to collect segregated data from the target group to identify differences. For example, from men and women, tenants and landlords, and so on. You should review previous studies or report and talk to key stakeholders. Also, use interviews, template questionnaires, and observation protocols to evaluate the targeted behaviors. And always adapt template tools to the local context. Step three is about the development of interventions. They are always based on identified drivers and barriers. Two important aspects to remember are, look through the lens of the target population, think of the desired behavior from the point of view of the incremental benefits to the consumer, not the service provider. Use multiple approaches, for example, to increase bill payments, send reminders to households, extend opening hours, of the payment office and enable mobile payments to make it easier for them to pay. To design and implement interventions, here we illustrate the EAST framework. But several alternative frameworks exist. Consider the behavior of households using improved hygienic pit emptying services. The intervention could be made easy by providing simple information about the service and costs or enabling households to order by a mobile phone app. Attractive, by offering a discount for using the service during a sale month. Social, appealing to civic pride, such as being a good citizen for emptying their pit. And timely, by promoting the services prior to the rainy season, when pits can otherwise overflow. Finally, check if the behavior change program is working and the target behaviors have been adopted. To produce findings, use a variety of sources. For example, if the goal is to regularly have residents pit emptied by an official provider, use evidence from pit emptiers records and personal feedback from residents. To find out what techniques worked and why, carry out interviews or conduct focus group discussions with the target population. Also, check for any unintended outcomes, positive as well as negative, and, if necessary, adjust the intervention. To sum up, individual behavior plays a key role in inclusive sanitation programming. No project can unfold its full potential if people don't comply. Therefore, understanding the living conditions and reality of your target group is key to success and is, ideally, already part of the project's planning phase. Identifying possible drivers and barriers to desired behavioral outcomes are essential, and to this end, Several frameworks can help you in doing this analysis. This allows you to design a comprehensive intervention that aims to remove barriers and activate drivers to change behavior. Thank you for watching.